Midday, the Sue Solo, we're on Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, Hot 107.9. So we already know the hip-hop turned 50 this year. We've been celebrating, but we haven't celebrated with LL Cool J. Come on now. And he in the room right now. Yeah. Hello, sir. What up? How you doing? How you feeling? Excellent. The Excellent. energy is amazing. It's on fire. Thank you. I appreciate that. You got a show in Atlanta tonight? I do. Who all going to be there? You know how your friends have to ask you when you invite them somewhere. Who all going to be there? That, that's hilarious. <laughs> so so first, let me just say that it's a nonstop show, so it's it's almost like one super group, the way it's presented. Mm. Um, there's no set changes on the show. Mm. Um, it's celebra- we're celebrating 50 years hip- of hip-hop, so it's, it's very similar to the way we did the Grammys. In that, you know, once it starts, it never ends. Mm. So this isn't a situation where you see one group and they leave and another group and then they leave. People are coming in and out of the stage. It's revolving and it's crazy, okay? So, you know, you're going to have everybody from De La Soul to to to, to Rakim to Salt and Pepper to myself to um, DJ Z Trip and Jazzy Jeff to the Roots Band backing us all up to some other special guests. Mm. It's um, going to be a pure celebration of hip-hop culture in, in these 50 years. And, you know, for those who really, you know, just are curious and want to just feel the impact of this, all that this culture has been over the years, this is the kind of show you want to see. Mm. Jay? Tell, tell me about that, just being part of the iconic label, <clears throat> Def Jam. Okay, Come so, on, so um, well, we started Def Jam in um in 84. And um, um, it was a production company. It was a, it was part of a, a a label called Streetwise Party Time, and it was Def Jam Productions. They had a song called "It's Yours" by mm. T. La Rock. I sent a tape in. Rick Rubin, Ad Rock of the Beastie Boys, actually heard my tape. He played it for Rick Rubin. One thing led to another, and me and Rick connected at his dorm at his college at wow. um, NYU. And uh, Russell and Rick got together, <clears throat> excuse me, and started Def Jam based on. That's crazy. Um, my tape. So, you know, my I was the first artist on Def Jam. Um, and then what we did was we put a couple of singles out independently through the label Def Jam. Um, and then we, we got a deal with Columbia. Mm. And then when we got that deal with Columbia, um, that's when we, you know, Def Jam became more of a major player in the game. Mm. And we saw it like growing on Public Enemy and Slick Rick and all these different people. And then down over the years, all of the people, all the famous artists that you know who are part of Def Jam. So how much how much did you play into that like just guiding them into the direction of just like just dope artists because coming from a, a kid from the streets and doing music like you knew probably a lot of those guys probably just heard about them and as far as having ear to the street and everything like that so I, I I heard some of them but but I was sixteen okay yeah. you know what I'm saying I was just starting and um you know they put the they put the house on a sixteen year old <laughs> yeah the house yeah come but on but actually yeah. you you weren't assigned artists originally right no like you were working with them and what like what was the so so my first song I did I need a beat I did it with no contract so you're absolutely right, right. okay I did my first the first song I did on Def Jam the label I didn't even have a contract mm. and um we just all just kind of just did it as a like an experiment you know what I mean to see wow. what would happen and it just one thing kind of snowballed. And um, it just became like this crazy thing. That you know is what I'm crazy because you have to have a lot of trust to say I'm going to put this faith. art out. Faith, there it is. Faith. You got to have it's a, a lot difference, of faith, right? right? Faith. And 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 you know that's the thing. When you want something real, real bad, and you got a vision, you're willing to put it all on the line to go get it. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I've always been. Mm. I'm very, very aggressive. You know what I'm saying? And when it comes to you know my dreams and things I want. I go get it. I don't play. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, in that moment, it was like, yo, you want to do this or not? Yeah. Let's get it. So when did you finally get to like the acting bug, like the movie and acting bug? Like? So around the same time, you know, I was, because when I was doing the music, you bump into agents, you bump into different people. And um, so, you know, I, I started doing movies. Like like Crush Groove mm-hmm. was one of the first hip hop movies. It right. was after Wild Style, of course. And it came, I think, before Breaking, I want to say, but it was definitely after after it might have been after breaking, but it was before um, it came. Um, I was actually an extra in the movie. Mm. I wasn't even supposed to be in that movie, um, but I just went to the set so much. You know, I had overslept for one of my video shoots. <laughs> oh my I just God. worked my way. I weaseled my way into getting a part in the movie. <laughs> you made, made made something happen. Made some shape. Not make it happen, B. Amen. Uh, make it happen. You know what I'm saying? That, that's hard, though, because I just feel like a lot of people, like, they don't really understand, like, Mm-mm. persistency is everything. If you mm-hmm. keep at something, you stay at it, Thank and people you. see you enough, and you get that one chance and that one shot, you got to shine. You got yeah. to go. So so what it is is that, 
what it is is that being persistent, being consistent, having a vision, really believing in what you're doing. Come on now. And um, um, not getting frustrated um, by, 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 by no's. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And mm. um, not letting your ego control. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Can't be no ego, baby. Yeah. You got now. to go get it. Come I think on. your love for hip hop too was just really genuine and and still is. Whereas <laughs> now, like the topic is, it's a money grab. Like people will say whatever, they'll act whatever way because they know that there's money in hip hop. So it's like we're losing the genuine love for the art of hip hop. So so there are some artists that feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times, <clears throat> let me tell you something. A lot of times when people, some people, when they talk about money grab or they talk about retirement, a lot of that is just insecurity. Right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you have a young artist and they'll be like, oh, I'm thinking about retiring because they don't know what they want to do next. Right. It's like, dude, you don't have to retire. Right. You, you don't have to retire. Right. Oh, your last album didn't perform. You don't have to retire. Put something it's, like, it's like being an athlete. Mm. Right. Just because you don't win the championship this year does not mean <laughs> that on, you man. need to retire. Come on, yeah, okay, yeah. just... just like, simmer down. down, okay? Yeah. Calm down. All right, your album didn't <laughs> yeah. do well. Okay, big come, deal. Come with another one. They Just come with no another faith. They don't have any faith. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You got to have faith, and you got to believe in what you're doing. And so, and in terms of the money grab, let me tell you something. The, 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 the guys who have the, all, the most rings and, the mo- and they really pop the champagne in the locker room and have the big cigars are the ones that love the game the most mm. and come put on, the man. most work into the game, not the ones that only want the contract. Right. So, so. Like, I own my whole catalog, mm. but I didn't get into the game to own a catalog. Right. Right? Right. Like, I I did not get into it for that. I got into it because I had a rhyme book, and I wanted to rhyme, and I just wanted to hear my, I wanted my friends to hear me on the radio, and mm-hmm. I felt like people in my neighborhood were invisible. Right. You know what I'm saying? So just put love the craft. You think about somebody like Kobe Bryant putting the work in and loving the craft. You think about Steph Curry loving the craft. Come on the contracts come, yeah. but when you love the craft— that's when the rest of that comes. So to write a song about something different, to be yourself, to be comfortable with being yourself, mm. that's the beauty of it. Come on now. Right? Is mm-hmm. it Big L or Big L Y? I've, I've been stuck on this well, for well, a long time. Th- well, this is my thing. I, I don't think nobody ever actually called me that. I just thought it sounded better than Little Ellie. I thought Little Ellie was, no. I don't know. I don't like Little Ellie. I figured Big Ellie actually sounded better. You know what I mean? So you can so make it whatever Ellie. you want. Ellie. I, I mean, whatever you want. It's whatever. Just put the big in front of it. Uh, some, yeah, Got yeah. You. I mean, I'm Got very you. comfortable with that. Got yes, you. yeah, yeah. Come on down, man. Show us tonight, man. Y'all make sure y'all come on out to the show. It's going to be amazing, man. 50 years of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? LL Cool J. LL going to be in the building. You know what I'm saying? They call me Lil Ellie. This doesn't have the same ring to it. You know what I mean? It's the Big Ellie. For sure. Well, Big L is going to be there tonight. People confront me about that. What they say? I ain't calling you Big Ellie. Like, who calls you that? Like, (laughs) you want me to call me Lil Ellie? I forget. We're in a different era now. I'm sorry. Little Ellie. Right. Uh, The biggest. I I go by Big Stewie, so they call me Big Stewie. They ain't got no choice. And I got to be the shortest guy in the room. (laughs) You hear me? And I'm going to stand on it, okay? Is this heaven going down, man? Concert tonight. Y'all make sure y'all pull up. Stay for Marina. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be out of control. 50 years of hip-hop, man. Definitely salute yeah. to you and continue to just be a blessing on folks, man. Thank you, man. And you know what? I just want to, you know, just like personally invite everybody down tonight to come down. Bring your families out. Bring the generations out. You know what I'm saying? Um, come see why, like, okay, so I'll give you an example. I termed the coin goat, like, Come, come see why. Mm. Come see why I, I, I made that up. People be using that word loosely. They do. That's okay. You can't I love use it. that word loosely. Every time they use it, I love it because it's it's it just shows you what's possible, right? Mm. So oh, you're, uh, you're, you're too the, kind. The goat, man. You're too it's kind. The goat. It's the goat. <laughs> it's too nice. Mm-mm. Up, up, up. Uh oh. <laughs> I ain't nice. Oh, I'm not nice, baby. He's my aggressive. Bad. I'm good. I ain't nice. My bad, son. Oh, no, I ain't nice. Don't get it twisted. Okay. No longer twisted. Go see him tonight, ATL. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ooh, let's get